think we got it. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I'm here with my bestie, Stephanie, one of your besties, too. We're the Ethel and Lucy of <laughs> the uh, <laughs> That's actually a really good. I, I like that. Ethel and Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> On the Truther community. So we're always, we're always, we're fun. We're the fun ones. Um, before we ever start, we started filming. I was talking about a stand-up com uh, comedian. There's another one, Leanne Morgan, who's from the South. She's from Tennessee. I think I showed you some of her clips. Uh, there's a joke that she has where she talks about how it took her five years to get through college because she's fun. <laughs> I just love that. I'm like, because that was fun. <laughs> Stephanie, we're fun. <laughs> we're the fun ones. So, um, so I didn't even make it through all the way through college. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Then I got knocked up. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're fun. Right? Because you're fun. You're one of the fun. Well, that wasn't exactly a fun relationship, needless to say. <laughs> it was a learning experience, a very unpleasant learning experience. And you got a beautiful boy out of it, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. we all done fucked up, okay? We all done fucked up at times. And that's, what, that's, what makes, that's what makes us fun. That's what makes, that's what yeah. makes human fun. It's the fuck ups that make human fun. Chakra, then I didn't have my crown chakra then, so I lacked my wisdom, okay? You know, it's so funny. I, I, everybody knows I love history. It was one of my favorite subjects in school. I never had to study for a history test. I just retained it. And now that we're going back and un, un uh, tangling these webs, I, I look at history very different now. And I've, I was watching last night before I went to bed, I was watching the Spanish princess, which is about Catherine of Aragon, who was Henry VIII's first wife. And of course, at that time, they tell us that, you know, 12 year old girls were being married off to like 70 year old men which is um, gross, like it's really gross. But if it's not yes, true, yes. it's just, I was watching it with such different eyes and I started to get a little bit cracked up a little bit. And I was thinking about a 12 year old girl and a 70 year old man. And I'm like, I don't know who's going to be in more of shock. Like a 12 year old girl is still playing with doll babies. Like and the seven year old man, probably at that point, couldn't even stay up that late. So at least they had the same bedtime. You know, I'm looking at it in a very comical eye because now we know it's probably not true. You know, it's, it's probably not, it's all, probably all bullshit. But anyway, my yeah. mind went somewhere else when you said this 70 year old couldn't stay, couldn't stand up late. Well, I was thinking that too, you know, it comes to, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a man. Nothing against 70 year olds. Nothing I don't have a ding -a -ling, but I, I know that at some point the ding-a-ling has a little hard time ding-donging, if you know what I mean. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's some herbs for that. Don't don't take the, the pharmaceuticals. I think there's some herbs I can help you with that problem. Need some, you need, need a snake charmer. A snake charmer. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. I mean, we we've charmed a few snakes in our day, but <laughs> <laughs> see, we're fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was so I was I, I hope Emmy doesn't mind we were on a three-way chat and we were laughing about something about and what was it we just determined I should be the one to teach sex ed to kids because <laughs> I don't know about that you know I want to tell you you're making a little, like, a little Bryce, fun and Bryce will teach him about those ace of cup moments she's gonna <laughs> she's gonna teach sex ed using the tarot cards there we go this is an ace of cups this is a good time <laughs> Which then equals the ten of cups. Yeah. Happy family. That's what happens. <laughs> and then you become the empress. And he becomes the you become a mama. Maybe he becomes the emperor. I don't know. It depends on the man. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, we laugh, we laugh, we laugh, we kid. Um, sorry for those men who are having problems with that area. I think, though, in, in the new world, actually, I think a lot of it is psychological, too, though. You might want to consider doing that. Actually, work. a lot of it's pharmaceutical induced. Really? Yeah. So, um, first of all, the main reason for ED is high blood pressure and heart problems because it's circulatory. So if your circulatory system is off track, off kilter, it's going to reduce blood flow to that particular zone. So you want to get your blood flowing, start exercising. It's a good point. And that'll get your heart. That'll get your, uh, that'll help with blood pressure and ever all that too. Kind of a Hawthorne berry is very good for the cardiovascular system. So if you're not allergic to Hawthorne berry, just, just take Hawthorne berries, soak it in alcohol for six weeks and you got yourself a tincture. Now we got the men listening to us. <laughs> 
You can get a Hawthorne berry at a witchy store. Go to a witchy store, get you some Hawthorne berry. <laughs> Listen, these are my bags of herbs. I got lots of them. <laughs> I hate the smell of patchouli and it overtakes everything. Yeah, yeah. It's an intense smell. Yeah. yeah, it's an but, intense smell. But, but yeah, yeah. I, I make tinctures and, and oils and ointments and oils and all sorts of fun, happy stuff. So if you're somebody who is having problems in the department, just email Stephanie. <laughs> she yeah. will send you like, stop. Me. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've already had too many men tell me about that problem in the doctor's <laughs> office. I'm done with that. So women, just exercise. if your man's having that problem, just do it. Stephanie said, give him some of those herbs on his, with his consent, because we know, well, and I know Dr. Phil is a dubious character, but there was one thing he said once that I agree with when a couple is having sex, then sex is not an issue in the relationship. It's not one of the issues, obviously. It's usually a pretty healthy relationship when there's intimacy. But if there is no intimacy, it becomes the main main point of the struggles of a relationship. We know how important. We know that the dark side has inverted that, but God Well, they purposely that. created health problems that trigger ED. That makes sense. To ruin the family unit and to ruin relationships. In addition to that, they have done things through our food and lack of exercise and lack of working on ourselves for the female so that when females hit a certain period of time, they can't also perform either because it becomes the Sahara Desert. Right. So yeah. In yeah. that case, work out. Take some herbs, some black cohosh might help you. That's really good for the, uh, the, um, the V system. <laughs> I should be an advertisement. You should the commercials for the new the new world. Um, fortunately, that's not something I've, I'm I'm not struggling with that at this moment in my life. I don't think you are either, Stephanie. We're not, but I will say too. I've heard that we're not supposed to go through menopause. So that's not supposed to happen. I've heard that with um with so our, like a half flashes already. I mean, like I don't think I've and had I don't them all my life. I've heard like my mom used to tell me, well, my mom used to tell us all the time as little girls that our periods were just preparing us for childbirth. Like our cramps were preparing us for childbirth. But from what I'm hearing, we're not even, I had a Chinese medicine doctor tell me once that I was not supposed to have cramps like that was not, and I didn't know what he was talking about, but now we're going into this and I'm like, oh, I don't think we are supposed to have cramps. I don't think childbirth is supposed to be that painful. I don't think it is. I like, don't know. A head going through the watermelon hoo hoo dilly. Yeah, and the watermelon going to the the, the hoo hoo dilly is a little bit. You know, it's it's a large thing going through a small. Thing. Small. <laughs> well, listen. Okay, so I was thinking. So people have, and I'm going to film this video at some point. People have asked me to like break down what it's like being in India, like what that's like, and I, I've got some emails. I'm going to do that, but I will tell you. I was thinking about this. You know. When you have a baby, we've talked about this before. I don't even want to see it come out of me. Like, I think that would traumatize me to have a mirror. Oh, they asked me if I wanted a mirror. I said, no, thank you. No, thank you. I don't want to see that. I don't want my baby daddy seeing that either. Listen, he knows what my hoo-ha looks like. Hence, while we're in this position to begin with, I don't want him looking at that coming out of me because I want him to remember my hoo-ha and the way it was before so we can go back to that um so yes and i was thinking with india india i was thinking you know i should really warn people that you've got to be really comfortable in your relationships before you go to india because those bathrooms have marble floors and you can hear everything in them so you gotta be real comfortable if oh, you're honey in when you have a baby well, I'm see, that's what I was thinking. I don't want him to see that either because I think that there are just some boundaries you don't cross. Listen, when, I cared about that at first. When you're in the middle of that shit, you don't care about shit. You just you literally you're just, don't care about you're worried that. about the thing that's in your belly just popping out because you're done. You're just you're just done. For those who have had kids, they know what I'm talking about. It's like, I don't give a shit. I don't care what I look like. I don't care who sees me. I don't care if I fart. I don't care if I shit. I don't care if I piss, just get this thing out of me now. I will tell you. So when my sister was pregnant with Charlie, my oldest, her oldest child, my, my nephew, um, when she went to the hospital to give birth, um, she got her epidural a little too late. And so she was feeling the pain. And I remember watching my brother-in-law 
at the time, like not knowing what to do, like seeing his wife in that much pain and my sister and Steven, they're like couple goals. Like they are like perfect together. They are, they love it. They, their relationship is like the best ever. They've always just been the best of friends with each other and just really love each other. And so seeing Steven's face of not knowing what to do, seeing his wife in this much pain, he would like grab my sister's hand to try to make her feel better. And I remember seeing my sister's very like, she's B blood. She's B negative. She's very laid back. But I remember seeing her take Steven's hand. She picked that hand up and she threw it off of her. <laughs> she was in so much pain. You're just, you're, you're just done at that point in time. You're just like, let's let, let's get this over and done with. Let's just do it. <laughs> By the third baby, they knew what to expect. But the first baby, I just, the, the look, just to see her like push Steven off of her, like get the butt, like it, it was priceless. It was, I was like, she, she's in pain. She's in a lot of pain. But anyway, we digress. Now, before we get to the topic at hand, which is the Priory of Scion, which we're going to, we're going to talk about. I do want Stephanie, because I, I did release um, Thursday morning. We are filming this on Thursday, but I'll probably be releasing this on Friday morning. Um, I released it a video about what consent looks like. And really to get us start to thinking about where we've given our consent, where we haven't, what that means and the polarization of, of being a positive person, a, a person of light. Now, when we talk about these, and we're going to try to keep this on YouTube, um, somebody asked, is this a medical trial? And that's how, and that's how these could be placebos. And I said that, no, we had spoken about this before. And I want you to reiterate that Stephanie, just cause there's mm -hmm. no confusion. You worked in the medical world is what's going on with these, a medical trial. No, I've actually been part of a medical trial. So I know what it entails. Um, first of all, medical trial is something that you find on your own. It's not advertise or broadcast it it can be advertised but it's not advertised globally we talked about that off air um so what a medical trial would entail is you go and you have a consultation with the physician who is doing the medical trial and you are given a lot of paperwork and you have to sign all the paperwork and they go through it with you and they just indicate that or they they tell you and give you consent um, and ask for your consent in order to do the medical trial where um, you have to consent to understanding you could possibly be on the real thing or possibly be on the placebo. Mm -hmm. um, so they have to indicate there is a chance that you could be one on the placebo. And what they do is in a medical trial, they then monitor you and you have to go in for regular checkups have your blood pressure checked, go through the, the whole process, and they then gauge your symptoms. Um, this is a treatment on something. Um, when we're looking at this, this is not a treatment on anything. This is literally um, a, a uh, M I, I don't want to say it on YouTube. So it's, it's, not, it's not a medication you would take to treat an illness. Okay, so for those who think that there might be what we would call placebo, uh, in my opinion, that doesn't exist because they would have to literally ask your consent to be possibly on a placebo, and then they would have to monitor you if it was a trial. It is an experiment that I do agree with, a diabolic trial, one, but it's not a experiment and a trial are two separate things so if you went to your physician you do sign you likely they do they are having people sign a consent form because when i went for my uh the flu this okay i had to sign a consent form now i didn't do that every year it was just um they they were priming for this particular thing and i've detoxed myself from all of that I've done a lot of heavy metal detoxing. So, um, and that's actually kind of what made me really sick. But, um, well, one of the things. So when we're looking at trials, this is not anything like a trial. Um, and so they would have to actually legitimately tell you there's a possibility of you being on a placebo. And they have not done that. that not that I know of anyhow. No. Uh, and, and they would have to monitor you after. Yeah. Yeah. And I know people who have gone to get it and they don't, there's no, there's no um, acknowledgement by any 
of the people running it that this what that's what and it's not global i'm going to relate it to this price if you were to have cancer no treatment has worked on you and they say okay we have these experimental medications that you can try do you consent to this it's the exact same thing you're yeah. consenting to an experimental thing it's um, not placebos only happen in trials not in experiments mm -hmm. so and they don't run trials globally do they no in addition to that any kind of experimental stuff like this also affects your life insurance so check out your life insurance plan just saying because if anything happens to somebody they're not covering anything no they're not no, because you agree to an experiment. So this is not a trial. Let's just, can we just ask the cards that disqualifying the 1%, the controllers? Because I do believe some of the controllers who did this on TV had a placebo, but I think- Oh, they didn't even have it, anything they had it put in them. No, it was, it was, exactly. a, fa it was, it was a fake fake syringe. But they knew that, they consented to that. So can we just ask the cards before we move into the prior of Siron, 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 um, is are there any placebos of these for the general public well obviously people were told that there was they so were that's to. telling telling somebody or like but we have a wheel of fortune card with the three of swords with the devil no oh, you don't get much clearer than that no so you guys that tells me too that spread tells me that these truthers that are trying to convince you that there are placebos are working for the devil too because that's not there and i tried to express this if someone you know even though none of us want our loved ones to get this it's still their choice we can't stand in the way of their choice and their free will just like we don't want somebody standing in the way of our choice and our free will not to get it we can't stand so, in their way either it's for those who did get this because they were coerced into and they regret it um and also those who had loved ones get it i think that want to put it in their head that there is placebo because of their fear revolving around maybe a sudden death of that family member or that friend but what I want people to remember is you have to let go of control over someone else. That's not you. Yeah. That includes your children. And no, it's not easy. It's not easy for me to even say this. My whole family ended up with it. So uh, if there's somebody who absolutely, I cried so many nights over the fact that my family up and got it. And I had to, it's okay to cry over it. It's okay to mourn over that, that, that it's an emotion and you know what don't store it inside cry it out absolutely have to mourn that mourning is definitely a part of healing but at the same time everybody has their own choices that they make and you have to respect the choices that other people make you know I, you don't have to agree with it but at the same time we need to get out of this um ha having control over other people trying to fix other people trying to convince other people so badly and and of course i've been in that predicament too i tried to convince tried to convince tried, and you, you end up being a broken record and in the end you're only hurting yourself really because you know you you're worrying about other people and not focusing on yourself and your own healing yeah so that's a yeah. bit and it's okay to, like I said, it's okay to cry if if mom and dad ended up getting it, or your 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 grown kids got it, or whatever. That doesn't. I don't think it's necessarily one hundred percent a death sentence. Yeah, I think it's on the intent. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have somebody going around trying to convince the whole world to get it, um, that's a polarized negative thing. So. But if someone was coerced into it, of course, because of their job, they, they, there was no way they could put food on the table for a loved one. Um, I, I think there is some sort of forgiveness there. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree they're, with that. They're going to have not, to work on themselves. It's not black and white. It's not like, oh, no. you got it. Now you're, you're done. And I, and I agree with that. That's a lot of people have said that. The ones that are, it's an, it, the ones who are inflicting their will onto others with this having the paperwork to go into certain places, you know, that's a negative, that's a polarized negative 
personality trait. It's, it would be the same if there, if someone was giving somebody a, a placebo, it's the same negative trait of, of inflicting your will onto someone else. And I agree with you. I think there's a lot of people who got it that are going to move forward with us because it was the intent behind what they were doing or people who got it, but still believe that others should have the right to choose. I think they'll still go forward because again, it's about the consent and it's about the intent behind it. So if someone got it, but they agree that you shouldn't have to get it if you don't want it, then that's a positive polarity trait, right? And even though they got it, they might still be going forward with us. The only thing is if, if you, and I think what happens too, Stephanie, because I know there are a lot of people in our community that got it, at least got one and then woke up. And so now when they start to think, oh, I got a placebo, that's negating the work that they need to do now to work on themselves to figure out why they got it. What is weak within them? What wound was within them that put them in, a, in that position to take it, if that makes sense? And I said this yeah. in the consent video, we are free to make choices. That's free will. We're not free of the consequences of those choices, though. And a lot of people who refused to get it from the get go knew that they could lose their job, knew that they could lose their family. They knew what the odds were stacked against them, but they still have that that integrity to sit in their gut, their gut feeling and say no. Now, those that folded and got it because they wanted to support their family, put food on the table, that was doing it in an act of love. So they're just going to have to then go work through that wound of why did I not trust that the, it's like, like when we talk about in the yoga sutras, when Sri Swami Shinitananda in his commentary talked about fear and anxiety, anytime we have fear and anxiety, it means that we're not aligned with God because all of a sudden we don't have that trust in the divine. Right. And that's the biggest point of being is trusting in the divine, trusting in the universe. Uh, Mark Roberts, I shared it on my community tab a few days ago. I released, I put one of his videos where he talks about Dharma and he has sent it to you and, and, um, Emmy Stephanie, where he talks about letting go and trusting the universe is going to carry you where you need to carry. And so for people who acted out of fear that they weren't gonna be able to feed their families, yes, they acted in love to protect their family, but they're also going to have to then work through, okay, why didn't I trust that God had me? And I'm not trying to come down because I, I struggle with anxiety all the time. You know, I'm, I'm the same way. I still have to like, work on that within myself. So I'm not saying if you're someone who did that, that that's bad on you. No, we all have these wounds we have to heal. And that's every single one of us has a wound. Oh, and I think that's how God sees it. I don't think God's going to be like, well, shame on you for not trusting in me and getting it. No, I think God's like, okay, well, let's figure out why you didn't trust. What wound was there? And usually those wounds are caused by whatever instability we've had in our life. And so if we look at it that way, and we also have to remember, and I said this in my video as well, um, from Thursday morning, if you look at the idea of fourth density harvesting, we're in third density now, the, the density of polarity. The next step is fourth density. We know, and Stephanie, we've talked about this a lot. The law of one makes it very clear that in order to be eligible to be harvested is what they call it, to move to the, to graduate to the next density, you have to have lived a certain amount of lives. So you have to have all this experience to be able to make a choice of whether you want to go positive or negative. There are a lot of souls on the earth right now that are not eligible for harvesting. Doesn't mean they're young souls. It just means they're not as old as some. And so what they decided to do in their soul contract, they were fully aware of this in their soul form, was to come to earth, live during this time. To gather extra credit because planet Earth is a very hard planet. It's the hardest third density planet to live on. And then right when um, the ascension happened, they knew they were going to have to leave because they weren't ready yet. And so that's another reason why I think Mr. T promoted this. Because this was a way to allow people to exit that need to exit because they can't, they can't, they're not ready. And their soul knows that. Their brain might not know that. It's like none of us remember our soul contracts, but their soul knows it. Their soul agreed to it. And so we also have to remember that too. What somebody's soul contract is, is none of our business. It's none of our business what somebody else's. We can't even remember our own damn soul contracts. Why do we want to get involved in someone else's? You know, all you can do <laughs> is take care of yourself. That's it. And, and acknowledge, and, and that's, that's the main thing too about going forth density positive. Just let people be who they are. Live and let, as long as somebody isn't hurting you, or anyone you love, let live and let live. Let them make their decisions. You cannot stop someone's karma for them. 
you have to allow people to play out their work. Karma is all that's all karma is, is work. It's just cause and effect. It's all it is. You have to allow someone to live that karma. Okay. So anyway, now let's switch gears. Unless there's anything else you want to add to that, Stephanie. No, I just need to pee. <laughs> oh, go, go pee. That's fine. Okay. Pee. So now let's get on with the Priory of Scion. Now, most of you guys probably heard of the Priory of Scion because of the Da Vinci Code. Um, we know that, again, I'm going to just reiterate because this is going to be a huge topic or a huge um, perspective. I'm going to take with Stephanie on this story. And Stephanie doesn't know a whole lot about this. Again, most of the time, I don't tell Stephanie anything about this until we get on to ca the camera. So she's a clear conduit and clear um, channeler, all the pictures I'm going to add in later after we're done filming. So Stephanie doesn't even have pictures of the places that we're speaking about trying to keep her as uninfluenced by outside forces as possible. All right. So if you guys remember the Da Vinci code came out, what back in the early two thousands and it kind of broke open this idea that the person known as Mary Magdalene and the person we at that point called Jesus were married and had children, which we know that's not Jesus's name. It was Yahshua. And if we read through a lot of the missing gospels, as we have been doing, it's very obvious that they had children, right? Very, very obvious. They had five children. Now, people who believe they have children will say only, only had one, Sarah. No, they had five kids. And we know Stephanie and I have talked about the Merovingians. And I'll, I'll link that down below the Merovingian episode we spoke about which Merovingian meant bloodline of Magdalene. Now, why do they say bloodline of Magdalene and not of Yahshua? Because as it's believed, the Magdalene bloodline, which is the O negative blo bloodline, which is the bloodline I carry, is the Atlantean bloodline. It's the bloodline that bled over from Atlantis, right? The O negative, meaning that there were no antigens, which the antigens would be the A or the B, an A antigen or B, which she, and Stephanie is AB negative, which is what Yahshua was. But O means that I, am, I, as an O negative, I have no antigens and I don't have the rhesus factor. So O negatives, the big joke with us O negatives is that we're the universal donor because everyone can take from us, but we can only receive blood or organs or whatever from other O negatives because our blood cannot take any other antigens. Any uh, So I hope that makes sense. So this comes down to a bloodline. All right. And that's the bloodline from Atlantis, which is the O negative blood. Okay. So we are told in our convoluted history from our controllers, we are told that after Yahshua or Jesus was crucified, which neither Stephanie nor I, I think I can speak for you in saying we don't believe he was ever actually crucified. Right. I think something maybe bad might have happened to him. But not crazy. the controllers, but it was had nothing to do with sins. No, because because why? Because because God, our God, doesn't require a blood sacrifice. That's what Lucifer requires. And nobody can pay for your karma for you. And we also know that communion is the eating. That's cannibalism. Oh, I was specifically told by. The real God. Stop taking communion. That was the beginning of my descending out of church. It's, it's, I remember I went, to, I went to go up and get it one day, and he's like, No, don't you dare. I'm like, it's can't, it's full on. It took me off guard. And I'm like, Well, why? It's cannibalism and drinking of. I'm like, Oh my God, you're right. It is. And I'm, it just like, and, and I'm hearing this like clear audience in my head during a church service. And I was like, oh my God, why didn't I think of this before? What? No wonder it always felt wrong. It always felt wrong to me. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And, and I think for us, I mean, I grew up Protestant, so we would only have communion like once every like six weeks. Yeah. So once a month. Every month. Yeah. And, and, and that's the whole, the, uh, transcension, I guess what it's called. That was the big difference in the beginning between Catholics and the Protestants is that the Catholics believe that when you take the communion, it literally turns into the blood and body of Christ. Whereas Protestants believe it's a metaphor that cracker still a cracker. It's just a met, but regardless, it's supporting this idea of cannibalism regardless. So, um, but it anyway. has his nicknames for that. <laughs> Christ checks. Christ checks. Get, get your morning dose of Christ checks. 
What was the other one? Crutano Christ. Crutano Christ. <laughs> at least he it's can make funny. a joke about it. I'm sure, I'm it's sure funny. God would laugh at that. Well, so after the story goes that after Jesus was crucified, um, all of the disciples dispersed. Um, according to what I've researched, Magdalene was one of the last to leave the area, which if, if that story is true, that was very brave of her because she was probably the most wanted woman at that point, especially since her children were his children. But the story goes that when she escaped, she went across the Mediterranean and landed at the, in the south of France near the Pyrenees Mountains. And that's where she lived the remainder of her life. Now, um, we know that the Cathars were, I've talked about the Cathars on my channel a lot. They were the Order of Magdalene. And so they, they allegedly lived in the south of France and they were kind of, kind of like an inquisition was held on them in the 13th uh, century by the Catholic Church where they were all murdered. Um, but this is kind of where this story takes place. Now, I don't believe that Magdalene ever lived in the Pyrenees. And I'm going to get into this because we know the Pyrenees is a, is a huge holder of the O negative bloodline. Now, I know this is going to upset some of our Christian folk watching. I just ask that you have an open mind. The story of Noah's Ark is the story of the flooding of Atlantis. That was the apocalypse. We've already had the apocalypse. That was the apocalypse. Noah was not the only person to survive. The name Genesis in the Bible is the, um, means the genetics of Isis. Yep. And Noah was not the only person to survive. In fact, Noah was one of the bad guys who survived. There were a lot of people from Atlantis that went to higher ground. So the Pyrenees Mountains, the mountain chains here in America, the Appalachia, um, Rocky Mountains, they went high in order to survive the flooding. That's why you find an, a lot of O negative. Look at me as an O negative. I'm, I'm actually a poster child for RH negative. My hair has a red tint to it. I have blue eyes. I have an extra uh, urinary tube, which is normal for RH negatives to have extra organs. I don't know why God thought giving me an extra urinary tube would mean anything. I have an extra personality. <laughs> I have extra bone in my back. Um, I was telling Stephanie, I have a friend who's RH negative and she has an extra kidney. She has three kidneys. Like that's helpful to have three kidneys. Why an extra urinary tube? I don't know, but that's typical of RH negative. But if you look at my, the way I look and you look at someone who's like a native American, we look very different, but there's a lot of O negatives who are also native American. So that does tell you that that's the Atlantean blood type. Okay. So the Pyrenees has a high concentrate of O negative because that's where a lot of the the Atlanteans went to for higher ground to survive and that's their descendants. Okay, that does not mean that that's where Magdalene lived. In fact, I think Stephanie and I agree that everything that happened to Magdalene and Yahshua happened here on this continent, not over there on that continent. Okay, but let's keep going. So there is a chateau. There's a lot of castles in that area that were allegedly Cathar ca castles. One of them is Reigns Le Chateau. And so in the 19th 50s. Now, Reigns Le, Ch Le Chateau, I've actually been there before. It's a tiny, tiny little like village that has a big wall around it. Okay. And they, they did that back in the day to protect from invaders. Um, it's just, it's very small. In 2018, the population that lived there was only 91 people. But every year it gets thousands and thousands and thousands of tourists because of this alleged conspiracy. So what is the conspiracy? So in the 1950s, a restaurant owner claimed that a local priest named Sonri or Sonre, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, my French is terrible. Sonri, I think, um, found Henri. Sonri. Sonri. Ho, ho. Sonri. <laughs> um, a lot of, uh, sorry for our French speaking people. Listen, I took French in school and all I remember is like, when you're reading French, like you don't say half the word. <laughs> so I remember it's like half the word just kind of falls away. The so, only thing I know in French is not appropriate. So. Will you push it back more? And that's Creole too. That's, I don't even think that's this as Creole. far as my French goes. <laughs> I think yeah, I think that's a, that's a more of the Creole French, but yeah, you know, more not, Spanish and Italian than anything. But well, the trois, like I remember counting in French. <laughs> um, my mother speaks pretty good French. Um, they were required as kids to learn to learn it, and um, they had to say poetry in French and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, my French is terrible. Like I said, I just remember like being like, "Damn, you don't even say like half the word when you're reading in French. Like half the word just disappears." So Sonri, I think that's how you say his name. 
Anyway, he was a local priest, and apparently he found an artifact that was left over from the, the wife of Louis VIII, King Louis VIII. Okay, so who was King Louis VIII? He was born on September 5th, 1187, and died on November 8th, 1226. He reigned from 1223 to 1226, so only for three years. And get this, Stephanie, guess what his nick nickname was? The Lion. Oh, so let's remember that. Can see that now? Can see that, okay? Now, the wife of Henry VIII was a woman named Blanche of Castile. Now, if you know anything about the history they taught us, Castile is part of Spain, like Aragon and Castile. So that was a big deal with Isabel and Ferdinand, who sent, who funded Columbus's exploration. Catherine of Aragon, the Spanish princess episode, that's her parents. And they Sounds like something out of Lord of the Rings, and then you add Blanche in there. And I all I can think of is um, Golden Girls. Yeah. Thank you for Blanche. Being a friend. Well, Blanche from the Golden Girls, she looked a lot like my grandmama, my mama's mama. But Blanche, she was the fun one. <laughs> She was the fun one. Um, so yeah, Blanche of Castile. So she married Louis VIII. And, and Spain and France, just like France and England, as they tell us, um, I question everything now, always kind of had a competitive over, over territory. We know all of the royal families are all basically the same family anyway. Um, now the Pyrenees mountains, right? I've, I've spent a lot of time in the Pyrenees. Uh, they speak a language, even to this day, that's a combination of both Spanish and French. They're kind of their own people. Um, beautiful, beautiful mountain chain, but Blanche of Castile. So she married Louis and they would make these political alliances, right? So if you're a daughter of a king or a queen of Spain and you marry the king or queen of France, you've made a political alliance. So marriage at this point was used as bargaining chips especially daughters and they had daughters you were a bargaining chip for political power but blanche apparently um had this thing that she had hidden away at rain La rains le chateau now blanche's grandmother was a woman named eleanor of aquitaine now i am i am a descendant of eleanor of aquitaine myself excuse me, as I blow my nose. Um, and it is very well known amongst uh, many of the uh, people who look into these conspiracies that Eleanor of Aquitaine actually did carry the Merovingian bloodline. So I know that on the back channel, it's come out that I am part of the Magdalene line. I've spoken about this on my channel before. Yes, I, heretically, I am a part of the Magdalene bloodline because I'm a descendant of Eleanor of Aquitaine. Now, we know that the royal families the controller families wanted to pull these bloodlines into their family tree to be able to be able to manipulate it. Right. Because they, they, that's what we know. They can't create anything. So Eleanor of Aquitaine was married off originally. She's had a lot of husbands, but her most famous husband was one of the English, uh, English Kings. She had a lot of sons. There was lots of warring around her. Anyway, you can find lots of stuff on Eleanor of Aquitaine girl led a very, very dramatic and very thrilling life. Perfect soap opera, Eleanor of Aquitaine. But Blanche was one of her granddaughters. So Blanche then apparently had this artifact that this priest found, Son Re found in the 1950s, that guess what? Said that there was children between Magdalene and Yahshua. There is a bloodline between Matt, which we already know, and that it created this idea around this priory of Sion. Now, we know that the Priory of Sion is not good. It's an inversion, but they're allegedly, so it's apparently a fraternity and secret society founded, their death card, founded over, my yeah, deck. Yeah, a, a, a fa founded over a thousand years ago during the first cr crusade, and they want to restore the Merovingian dynasty or so they say. But we know, we know there are a lot of people in the cabal that are a part of the Priory of Sion. So let's try to unravel this a bit, because this is what I'm thinking. This is my speculation. They've stolen the bloodline of Magdalene and Yahshua, and they're trying to implement it into their satanic rulers. And the bloodline they're trying to rise up is the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. That's my theory. Mm -hmm. There really mm -hmm. is. And I, and I think that's why I have a, a target on my head. Because I actually know that one of the people that's threatened me is part of the Priory of Sion. I know that. So 
And I told Stephanie before we started filming, I was going to be very vulnerable and very honest because I'm protected and this shit needs to come out. So where do we want to start, Stephanie? Can we just verify with the cards? Did Magdalene and Yashua have babies? Did they have babies? I wonder what their, I wonder what her baby shower was like. <laughs> I don't know, Bryce. <laughs> Probably had a good time. <laughs> I wonder if they played games. Like, I wonder if they like. I don't think they had baby showers then. <laughs> they were so damn rich. They both, both we know both Magdalene and Yashua came from very wealthy families, so they didn't need they didn't need the community bringing them cribs and diapers. They could afford that. <laughs> they had a very. We know that they had a very loving relationship because they had about five kids. So and they were also twinsies. They were also twinsies. They were the same same soul. Well, yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> and I think they were like jackrabbits. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I think it's hysterical. Like, oh, Christians are gonna just die <laughs> over this information. They Anyways, really so loved each other. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that would be like, yeah, they they quick they quickly had kids. Okay. Um, and then we also have this page of wands, which is also child like energy. And um, yeah, yeah, they were. Yes. So, and we've already, I guys, again, I'm going to put that, um, I'm not going to get too much into the Merovingians because we've already done the Merovingians and I will put that link below. So basically, the theory is, is that their bloodline were the Merovingians. And the Merovingians <laughs> were a powerful dynasty that ruled during Tartaria. During the 1,000 years of peace, they were very healing. They saw themselves as equal to, to the people. They were, they were responsible for healing the people. Now, can we ask the cards? I don't know how you want to ask this. Let's just verify. Is the story about Magdalene being in the south of France in the Pyrenees, is that fake news? Okay, is this fake news? Is it fake? Oh, it's fake news. It's fake news. Um, so number one, I get the judgment card. Okay. With the eight of swords and the five of cups. So that's like hidden information on that card. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this would, I, I'm looking at this as like disappointment to people who were lied to. You know, we know where that's going. And it's like, we've been blocked of information. So are they taking the um, high volume of O negative blood there from the Atlanteans and are they manipulating that to be the Magdalene line? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Read my face, girl. Read my face. Are we onto something? Are we Nancy during the shit out of this? <laughs> They're trying to put a stop to it. The Magdalene line, the purity. Yep, they're trying. They're trying to put a stop to the light. That could also be taken as solar flash too. Okay, so they're trying to do that. It's been a battle. Okay, and has something to do with youngsters. Yeah, with those who are descendants. So, for those who don't know, the tarot pages are oftentimes. I mean, if you look at this card, that's a child. So and this is, and it's a sword. So the, I'm looking at this as the descendants of the children. The Merovingians. Yes. Yes, so, that's where I'm going with that. Swords are communication. Yes. So can we, and I know I asked this with them. Will you verify, Stephanie? Let's just skip, and then we're going to get a little into Eleanor of Aquitaine. Is the Priory of Sion, have they put hits on me because I am a descendant of the Merovingians? Me as Bryce, meaning I am a, that because that's that communication because a lot, there are a lot of YouTubers out there in the truther community who are good, who are also descendants. And what's the sorts? What's the sorts? Communication. Communication. Truth. So, true, thing. true, true communication. So there are a lot of us who are children who are descendants of the Merovingians who are on YouTube right now speaking the truth and we're being heavily attacked by the Priory of Sion right now. Mm -hmm. 
No, not just you, honey. I know. But yes. I know. I love the cards right now. <laughs> Because right. I know the dark cats watch all this shit. I know. That's I, know I know the white cats it. watch it. I know the dark cats watch I it. I know. I'm, like, listen, boo. I know I'm protected. So I'm going to just expose your asses right now. I know I love God so me. much. I love the true God so much. I'm a fucking Merovingian. That's why you're coming after me. I'm a descendant of Magdalene and Yahshua. First of all. Oh, yeah. They're going after you. I'm not saying who this is either, but you know where I'm going with that. That's that's toward you directly, okay? You, you know how to read the cards enough. I know so. who they're, I know who, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, well, that's cards. So that would tell me yes. But military <laughs> is the way. See? God has a sense of humor. I love it. So can we ask, is that why I have military protection? Because I'm yeah, a, we already asked that. Yeah, on I'm another a show, but yeah. Surprise. Well, I'm Bryce Watson. Like I'm Bryce Watson, but I'm a descendant of the Maravet. Magdalene is not only, so let's verify with the cards. Magdalene is not only one of my guides, but I'm one of her descendants too. Yes. That's why she's one of my guides. Guys, she's one, I'm, I'm one of her descendants. And there's a lot of us. They had five children, five children. They all had babies and they all had babies and they all had babies. There's a Which lot. Which would be of the 144,000. Boom. Oh, let's verify then. Is that the 144,000, the Merovingians, the descendants of the, I'll just call us the Merovingians. Yep. So is the Priory of Sion. So I, I, let me figure out how to ask this. Okay. They got to do some like hocus pocus, right? Because. Because the darkness cannot create anything. It can only steal from the light and invert it. So did they try to steal the bloodline of Magdalene through Eleanor of Aquitaine? Was she their way in to confiscating that bloodline for themselves? The Hermit came out first, which is almost like isolating of her to, because I, I get, yeah. Yeah. Ace of Swords. Yeah. So that's where this kind of started. Where, where, well, she where, held her ground. Oh, girl, yeah. Girl was like a fighter. She held her ground. I'm actually very proud to be a descendant of Eleanor of Aquitaine, to be honest with you guys. Like, I, she, girl was a fighter. And, um, and yeah, she was a descendant. So, so can we ask, will the cards give us any indication? Because we don't know timeline. We don't know, like, because they've messed our years up. They added a thousand years in. They spread history out. How many... I don't know if the cards can tell us in like wands or so, how many generations separated from the, from the Merovingian line was Eleanor of Aquitaine, meaning was she actually a Merovingian? Was she actually a child of Magdalene and Yeshua? I don't know if I'm that advanced in the cards, but I can say, like, we got to be very specific. So, yeah. That's why I don't know. That might be something we'll have to wait and find out once the truth is totally revealed. Yeah. But I'm thinking that she was pretty close to the source is what I'm thinking. Uh, and that's why she's kind of, and then she got comp, she kind of got forced into and stole it. Yeah. And they did actually lock her up for a little bit. She did to that hurt. She did kind of get jailed for a little bit. I, you guys can look up her story. She is a, she had a lot of kids, uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine and she was very, um, strong in her own right. So can we ask, was Eleanor of Aquitaine actually born on the American continent? Even though Aquitaine is in the South of France. I'm thinking she's Aquitaine actually. sounds like a place in Connecticut. You have weddings called the Aquaturf. Oh, wow. Yeah. But anytime you say Aquitaine, I think of that place. Let me ask you. I got them married there. Normally, I, um, like I said in the beginning, I'm going to add. Uh, what was I asking again? Is, was Eleanor of Aquitaine born, born in, in America. the United States? I'm going to try to find, um, let's see, Aquitaine, so I can show people France, what they, where they tell us Aquitaine is located. <laughs> so they tell us, if you can see, guys, they tell us Aquitaine is uh, located in the south of France, right on the Pyrenees, right? And Rennes-le-Chateau is like over here near the Mediterranean. 
And this is where they tell us Eleanor is from, but I just don't think she's from there. I think because we know that that's not where Magdalene and Yahshua lived, unless she is further separated from Yahshua and Magdalene than we think, and therefore got placed in Europe and not in the Americas. She wasn't born in America. She came over after. Came to America after? Yeah. Even as, as a child. As a child. Even though she's buried in Europe. And it looks like she was also married in America. And then something bad must have happened to her, and oh, she well, might have been late to rest in America. No, she's buried in Europe. Or were we told that? I know. I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. Listen, I got four swords, so I don't know. I mean, it is the card, so we take it with a grain of salt, of course. But I'm going to show you. As a child, it's like she had to, she had to uh, there was some ending of something that, you know, she had to give oh, up something. No, no, no. Or so, some so I'm getting from that that she was born in America and then had to surrender over to Europe to change the story. I can't see that. Four of, of the marriage card. Well, yeah, she was married yeah. a few times. And never. Then, yeah. So never happy marriages. I mean, she, you guys, I mean, they had done so many movies on Eleanor of Aquitaine because her life was literally a telenovela. So what that tells me, Stephanie, is that she was born in America and got sold off into the British royal family. And a, a story was yes. she had to surrender to that story that was created around her being French. Unless they swapped it out. <laughs> but I know the real, we know the real France is Canada. So can we ask, was she born in Canada? Because we know that's where Magdalene most likely ended her, or not ended her life, but where her life ended for her was in Canada. What, what they call Gaul, which isn't France, it's Canada. Sorry about the siren, if you can hear it. Been a lot of sirens lately. So soul contracts. I mean, as a child, she was definitely there. It's not giving me any more than that, but it looks like she had to walk away from something. And uh, oh, she didn't want to. No. But it looks like there was some sort of offering that came through. She was very unhappy about it. Had something to do possibly military. And it's like they isolated her from her family. Yes. So that does match her story, guys. If you know the Eleanor of Aquitaine story. So she was born. I believe she was born in Canada. What, what we call Canada. They called that Gaul back then. Um, that's why the French. You know, so French Canadians, you're like the real French people. Sorry, French people, but um, everything's flipped. Um, and they created a whole story. And she, I mean, she was used as a chess piece. And I think they pulled her into the, the controller's royal bloodline to pull in the Magdalene line. And we know that that's contractually what had to happen, if that makes sense, because even Source God created it that way, right? After Tartaria would be the onslaught as the beginning of Gog and Magog, which is what we're in now which is the final battle, if that makes sense. And so we had to have Lucifer reign so that we could make choices, so that we would have the free will to consent where we wanted to go. And, um, okay, so let's see. So we know that from the cards, we, even without the cards, we know that these stories are all manipulated, right? So did the controllers steal something from Eleanor of Aquitaine and place it in Reigns Le Chateau to make people believe that the bloodline of Magdalene and Yahshua where it was in that area, if that makes sense, to help bleed into the story of the raising of the Antichrist is what I'm getting to. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my mm -hmm. head. Where is she buried? Somewhere in Europe. Let me, let me, let's see. Let me look it up. I want to say France. I'm not 100% sure though. I think they stole her body. What? Yeah. I sure do. Yeah. Um, he's buried in France. So it's like, or, or they stole um, a body of a 
little person. That could have been hers. A death of uh, a child of hers, potentially. But anyways, I'm getting that um, they stole something that um, I'm getting. I'm getting a body. I'm getting a body. And um, I was laid to rest. And what I see with the tower is that whatever La Chateau you're talking about, I'm kind of looking at it as an actual place. Yeah. Um, Castle. And then I, I'm looking at this as her, the Queen of Pentacles, because she probably is wealthy because she was in that, you know, the royal family at the time. So I'm, I'm getting that it could have been her and a child of hers. No, I got that well differently because she she was the wealth. She specifically. Well, with the page with the page of cups, that's a that's a card of child energy. Could it be her womb though that they're talking about as the descendant of Magdalene? It could also be too, because she also. was the she was the wealth. It was her about her being because when we're Magdalene guys, we remember Magdalene means womb. And she was a Merovingian and they ployed her into the royal family to. You got to download, didn't you? I want to cry right now. Did they perform sex rituals on her to impregnate her with demons? Did the Dracos rape her? I was actually. But I'm thinking, because we know that the royal family is Draco, but they carry the same bloodline as Magdalene. Did they rape with the Draco? So did a Draco come in and, in order to merge demon and Magdalene bloodline to create the controllers? Hold on. Let me ask again, because I didn't clearly ask in my head. And the cards aren't making any sense at all. So give me a sec, okay? Yes. Judgment. Higher fun. So it's definitely ritual. So that's what I'm thinking. Because we know they're shapeshifters. Draco. So they took a descendant of the Merovingians through the pure bloodline of Magdalene and Yashua. Raped her. So that we have a hybrid of Draco and Magdalene that's now sitting on the thrones of Europe. So can we ask, is this what created the royal family? What, that we know, the royal families that we know today. I'm not just talking about the British royal family, guys. I'm talking about the Habsburgs. I'm talking about the Bourbons. I'm talking about all of them. All y'all. All y'all royal families. They're all from the same family tree anyway. Absolutely. I don't even need major arcana cards to tell me yes on that one. Six of... Uh, six of Swords, which is like travel, moving forward with something. Like that's a marriage card. That's a merging card to the Tower card. And the Six of Cups is all about family reunion type of energy. So I would say, yeah, to that, what would you get? Yeah, because it's a union of Fergog and Magog. It's what created all these controllers. And that's why they feel like they have power over us because they're not only Draco, but they're also carry, they also now carry the bloodline. Right. So I'm going to ask this, Stephanie. In these royal families, in every generation, there's always someone born that's pure, that's not psychotic. Look at Diana, for example. And she, even though she, was considered a commoner she was cousin like distant cousins to charles so she's also from the same bloodline okay my great 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 grandfather was born into the royal family everyone knows this he was third in line for the throne when he died from what i understand when he got the throne his plan was to take down the monarchy 
can I just ask? I'm not going to say his name. You know his name, Stephanie. Was my great 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 grandfather aware of this? And was he pure? Was he pure Magdalene bloodline? No Draco. So I want to make it clear. I am. I know who his, who his name is, and I am getting a message from him. I'm not prying into his business, right? You want to be careful of. Yeah, and this this particular ancestor of mine, I has been around me since I was a kid, so I'm very familiar with him and who he is. And he's talked to me before, right? Mm -hmm. Or was that your other grandfather? Well, they're both the same name. So. <laughs> well, he's definitely the light. Got an ace of swords. And yeah, he was going to end it. Did, did Queen Victoria, who is my five times great grandmother, did Queen Victoria have him killed? Her own grandson. The history books will tell you he died of a sickness and without children. That's not true. He had a daughter. He was the loving person, King of Cups. She was probably into some, some sort of sorcery. Yeah, she was. He stood his ground. He died for it. And he also protected his daughter, which is my great great grandmother. Um, is that why Jack the Ripper happened? Was it to cover up what was going on with the royal family? Like, I think it's like a double edged sword. Like, it was a sacrifice and it was covering up what was going on within the royal family. Who is Jack the Ripper again? We don't know. Still an unsolved mystery. He murdered like all these prostitutes in East London. He was an educated man, we know, because he performed like a surgeon. But it all happened around the same time that my three times great grand grandfather supposedly like was sick and died. And I've always thought it was a cover up for what was going on in the royal family. Oh, well, we have confusion and chaos here. And again, we have that Queen of Wands come up. Victoria. Again. Queen Victoria. Yeah. Um, and it's like they probably put the, uh, this is swords, so that could be put the truth asleep, right? Kind of push things down and, pop, and blamed it on some sort of Lone Star Man. Yeah. But Queen Victoria most likely was behind it. Yeah. That's the ace of swords on the bottom of the deck. Um, so let's ask, is the Priory of Sion now trying to raise what we would call the Antichrist through the stolen bloodline? I, I can't say this on camera, but let me just pull more cards. So yeah, I'll tell details off camera though. Our... Um, now, I know this for a fact, but let's just so people know, are there truthers that are part of the Priory of Sion? I'm not asking about anybody in particular. Yes, yeah, I'm asking in general. Yeah. Are there truthers that are part of the Priory of Sion in secret? I know who they are. I've been shown the work, the very work. I know who they are too. Soon the world will know who they are. <laughs> secret secrets are no fun. Secrets are for everyone. <laughs> I dropped a card. We have to have a dropped card in an episode, okay? It's just, it's, it's just like the thing. It's the thing. If anybody knew my workspace, and Bryce certainly knows my workspace, I work on a counter. <laughs> 
I always think it's God's way of giving us a God wink when your a car fly, card flies off. You said that that was the card that flew. Boom. But I'm going to explain this. Apparently, I've been told people appreciate my facial expressions when I get when I get an answer because I really am a bad liar. I well, don't you're lie not very reading well. off of a it's teleprompter, right? Like you could tell others are reading off of teleprompters if you watch closely. Everybody's not. <laughs> I um I speak with my face. <laughs> and she doesn't, she doesn't um, know the answers until she gets the cards, just like we don't. So yeah. Um, okay, so it, it's like, um, these are people that came off like they started this journey of truthing, right? Causing confusion and chaos amongst the masses. Coming off as though they are of the light. Who's collecting money, by the way? Well, they're being paid by the three-letter agency as well. And then we have a page of pentacles, so that would tell me, yes. I'm actually not getting all of them are human. All I got to do is look. I mean, it's quite obvious who's not human and who is. Um, yeah, because they're they're definitely trying to push the the world. They're they're, they're pushing an agenda of their own. Okay. Um, and I feel like this page of swords is like they kind of look at us like we're stupid, like young. They're actually young souls too. So these are not old souls. They know who I am, right? These, so I'm, yeah, I'm, they, I, I want to make, make, make them look like idiots. And they, are they pissed because I know who they are and I know who well, I yeah, am? Well, yeah, I don't even need cards for that. I've already gotten that before, but yeah. They're pissed because I know the truth. I know yeah. the truth. I know who I am. I've known who I am before I even started a damn YouTube channel. I have the fucking paperwork. I know who I am. I've known I'm a descendant of Eleanor of Aquitaine. I've known that for years. Can I ask? A, so, so listen, Priory of Scion, I fucking know who you are. You know, I know who you are. You've seen my affidavits or maybe you haven't seen them, but you know, listen, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm just going to say, listen, you, I got protection. There's nothing you can do. I know you must be so frustrated because you put so many hits on me. I'm aware of them. You've put so many death spells on me and nothing's happened. <laughs> so, um, jokes on you. Um, Listen, okay, can I ask one last question? Am I the reincarnate of Eleanor of Aquitaine? I don't care if I am or am I, I'm not. I, I know, but I just kind of got that download. Yeah, well, I had the download in the middle of the show too. That I'm the reincarnate. Can we just ask, it, it was I Eleanor of Aquitaine? <laughs> Meanwhile, we got in a past show. I was some Italian girl that was passed off. <laughs> this is why I'm doubly potent is because I was their little sacrificial if I was her and now I'm back, bitches, you ain't sacrificing me this life. Yeah. At least I was a badass. And if she was a badass, though, I will say, she, girl is a badass. So. <laughs> This is on the bottom too. <gasps> Can I ask, do, do they know that I was Eleanor? Because <laughs> I want everyone, we're just having fun here. If, if, if they, if they knew that, and I just figured that out today, I will give them that. That's one thing they knew about me that I didn't know. <laughs> but, um, but, um, do they know, does the Priory of Scion know who I am? As far as, Ele if, if I am Eleanor back with do they know that? Not just that I'm Merovingian, but God, this is so incestuous, isn't it? <laughs> We've just been doing the same merry-go-round ride. If I'm you tired. told me I was going to be pulling cards on this shit a year ago, I would have said you're out of your damn mother effing mind. Okay. I mean, think about this. I mean, this is kind of gross, guys. We've been on the same merry-go-round ride for, for lifetimes. I want to get off now. I want to get off. Abort mission. Abort <laughs> mission. Where's the button? <laughs> no, where's the eject button? <laughs>
Um, I think they speculated. Speculated. Yeah, yeah I had the moon card here. Okay, well. So I do feel like you've kind of been hidden in plain sight kind of a thing. Yeah, I mean, I know they know I'm Merabengian. I know that. Now they probably, they're trying to stop you. Good. Yeah, we know that. From, <laughs> from changing things. But they... They fucked with the wrong empress. And maybe it's because they did it before. They got to change, you know, but they're not doing it this time. I'm telling you guys, your goose is cooked. Like, you're done. Like, it's comical. I was talking offline yesterday with someone. I was like, I have total peace about everything because I know what's going on. And you can't, you can't get off this damn planet, guys. Like, to the Priory of Scion, like, you're stuck on this planet like we are. You got nowhere to hide. There's nowhere you can hide. If I were you, I would suggest just surrendering and hoping to negotiate a lighter sentence by surrendering. They're not going to though, because they're that arrogant. They're they're yeah. psychopathic narcissists. They they're never going to admit they're wrong. Was I targeted by a particular truther that he used to do videos with because she knew I was Merovingian? Can I ask that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, she was hired. I don't, I don't need to curse for that. Oh, it's kind of comical, isn't it, Stephanie? Kind of comical. I took up the cards. It's kind That's of more comical <laughs> that I took up the cards. Well, and I will tell you, and I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. My contacts tell me that Stephanie, as far as the truth or community is concerned, she's the only person reading the, the cards correctly. And the truth or community. She's the only one. I was guided. Oh my God. I remember sitting on the couch one day and I was, you know, you get that voice in your head. You know, you've, you've heard Maggie your whole life. Well, I heard my own uh, voice, my own source of, of somebody. Okay. You need to read cards. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's not happening. No, it's kind of like my YouTube channel. Well, first it was make a YouTube channel. No, why? Just do it. Six months of fighting God. Finally did it. I will never forget that first video I put out. I think I sweat half of my body weight that day. <laughs> okay. Then it was like, okay, I got a channel. You need to reach out to Bryce. What the hell for? She ain't going to talk to me. You're later. Besties. Lucy and Apple. But, but it was like last October or last September. It was like, okay, buy cards. I can't read cards. Oh, you're going to. See, God gets very, very, um, very snarky with me sometimes. Very loving, loving, but I need to push sometimes. I need a, I need to fire lit sometimes. Well, he had to push you because you were coming out of religious programming. Well, not only that, but this was needed. Yeah. And this was uh, needed. And I will say, so I know like on, um, in the truther community, there are like three big tarot card readers, Stephanie being one of them. She's the only one reading, right? She's the only one guys that's reading the cards correctly. The other ones know what they're doing. They're just using the cards to manipulate. And well, so that's supposed to show you it can be used for good or bad. And I, um, and, and the thing about me too, and you know, for those priory scion piece of shits thing about me is I can't be bought. You wave a million dollar bill in front of me. I'll just say, yeah. So I can't be bought either. I can't be bought. I can't. And I've actually had conversations with that, with people contacts behind the scenes where I've asked them about just personally about like, what is, what about some of these truthers that are good? And they, they've talked about, you know, I'm not going to say names, but like, that they are watching to see who is selling out and who's not. It doesn't mean that some of these truthers that have created a lot of money and a lot of income from this are bad. It just means they've kind of sold out. Now, of course you need to be able to make money off of what, what you do for a living. We all need to pay the bills. But like, if you look at like, like when I do my yoga course, that's going to be posted soon, it's going to be a separate course from my channel, my channel, the information on my channel is always going to be free for anyone who has the internet. You know, the yoga course is separate. It's a separate business. But as far as like my channel, it's always going to be free. Same with Stephanie. We don't have a, a plan. I love my patrons. My patrons keep this channel going, but I don't have a separate platform where there's, you have to pay for information. There's no paywall. 
you know, so, so yeah, it's, it's, um, I can't be bought either. Um, you know that you've seen where I live, Stephanie, am I someone that could be bought? It's a tiny little place and I live in a tiny little house. I mean, my house, I mean, it's, it's a decent size for what we need, but it's not anything fancy. Is it? It's perfect for what you need. And that's how yeah. I've always been. I'm a minimalist. I don't like need extra stuff. I don't I like extra, extra stuff. stuff. Extra stuff to me is just, um, more aggravation. Mm -hmm. It's more and it's, um, to do. it's more cleaning to do. It's yeah, like, exactly. You know. So, you know, I just, you know, for me, a home is not a big house. It's a place you feel comfortable and it's welcoming. And it, if you have other people over your house, it's welcoming to them. Um, and then honestly, the most that I buy are, I'll buy a deck of cards like once a month now. And I buy a lot of books. That's about it. But the books too. are so I can learn. Yeah, books. And that's I'm what huge, is my education. I'm a huge believer in actually having a physical book in your hand, not a Yeah, me too. Because I write in the books and I can always pull them in and I highlight in my books. Yeah, it's mine. So yeah. Um can I, and I like to have the physical copy? Yeah. So anyways. I like the smell of books. I'm gonna ask one last question I forgot to ask. Now we know Louis the fit or the eighth was called the lion. Was this <laughs> was this trying, them trying to invert the Lyrens? which is what Magdalene was. That's what the O negative bloodline is, is the Lyrens. Was them, is that, was that them? And that we know the Lyrens carry the Christ consciousness. So is that, was that them trying to invert it? Does that make sense? By calling him the lion. Was he bad? Um, he died very young. So that was my second question. If they weren't inverting it, was was Eleanor of Aquitaine trying to get her granddaughter Blanche to marry him to restore the true Merovingian line, not the fake one? So I think the whole lion behind him is funny because the strength card came out first with 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 a lion, okay? And then I have that child and these pages keep coming up, right? So, so that childlike energy with the star in the world card. But then, he, so it's like, it was a good thing at first, but then, yeah, they inverted it. The magician with the seven of cups is an inversion of, and like, as there's a battle. Oh yeah. Louis the eighth died very young. He was uh, engaged in, yeah. Okay. So I didn't know if that was an inversion. I know they called him the lion probably because of the Lyrens or Lyrens, but Lyrens, but, um, I didn't know if they were trying to invert it, try to steal from it, or if they were, if, or, if, or if Eleanor of Aquitaine was literally trying to get Blanche and him married so that they could restore the true Merovingian line, not the fake one from the Priory of Sion. So let's just one last question, because I know I'm going to get this in the comment section. A lot of people believe the Priory of Sion is just a conspiracy theory. So can we ask, at least for me, if you have questions, we can go into your questions. But just to confirm, does the Priory of Sion exist really exist yep it's one yeah yep just want to put that out there it does really exist and the, i'm assuming the da vinci code was put out because they had to inform us hold up it first started off something good yeah the merovingians it started off as like the bloodline of christ but then that ended the controllers took it by confiscating Eleanor of Aquitaine. Yeah, it was, it's an inversion of the true bloodline of Magdalene and Yash, but not the fake one. So um, now, Stephanie, you found an interesting book. Can we talk about this for a little bit? What's that book, book. you found on Amazon? And it's a, like a fictional book, but we don't know where there is a there's apparently uh, a gospel under the Vatican that was also written by Magdalene, not her. Not oh, her. I didn't, I didn't buy that book. Um, I found somebody had, po oh, hold up, hold up. Um, I know what you're talking about. Cause I'm being urged to talk about this now because. Give me a second. Just keep talking to my list. Yeah. Okay. So they were trying, cause we know that, that some of the bad truthers are making Osiris and Isis out to be terrible demonic beings when they're not because Yahshua and Magdalene came from the priest and priesthood of Isis. 
And I remember you said that book that in Magdalene's like there's a gospel or not a gospel, but a, a, a manuscript that Magdalene wrote herself. We have her gospel, but a, another manuscript she wrote that will basically take down the Priory of Sion, will take down all religions because she spells it out for you. And you had found that. And, and she even admitted that these are admitting that the, the, the fake, the fake people, the prior, the bad people, the Priory of Sion, we're going to start to blame the Antichrist on Osiris. She called that out. And that's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. Give me a second. I will find it soon. One, you, you should see my books list. And we know that's what they're doing. They're trying to convince you that the obelisk is Osiris is wiener. It's not. It's no, a, it's, it's a flipping, um, it's There's no part. way a penis doesn't have, it's more of a dome. It's not a point. A Thunderdome. <laughs> like um, anytime I, anybody I, says I, that, I feel like it's like going to the disco underneath the Thunderdome. <laughs> kind of is going to the disco. <laughs> I got moves. They're multiplying. What? <laughs> I don't know. Um, listen, if, if, a, if a ding dong came at me that pointed, I would be a little bit afraid. <laughs> it was fierce me. Um, no, it's a little bit, it's a little softer on the top than that. But um, no, it was an antenna. The obelisk was an antenna for energy, just like our spine is an antenna for energy. And so that's what I keep saying. If they keep, if these fake bad cabal truthers keep trying to convince you to tear down all the obelisks, who's to say those obelisks aren't for t Tesla free energy? So they're getting you to destroy your own free energy and your own history. But I just keep thinking oh, good gravy. There's a connection between these priory members of this secret fraternity and the um, willingness to pull in the Antichrist by trying to blame the Antichrist on the good guys. Because they invert everything, right? It's confusion. It's gaslighting. Come on, Steph. Find it. <laughs> I might have to just type it in and see where God takes me because it's it's on my list somewhere i literally have like a hundred books on this list it's pretty retarded ridiculous right. sorry sorry if i i shouldn't say that word but um oh there's a book called plot against the president <laughs> of gardening books <laughs> first aid books make your own candle books the Bible prophecy and Mr. T. Alchemy, bread making. <laughs> I'm being silly. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Well, if you can't find it, we can just kind of go off what I remember and see if we can connect the dots even more. Maybe people can uh, comment in this comment. I, I, ooh, find it. Found it. Ooh, found it. Right. <laughs> Give us I'm a gonna synopsis. The, I'm going to read the back. I'm going to read the back. It's called the, the Magdalene Deception. Okay. And it, it looks like this. You can find it on Amazon. It's $16. All right. Um, for 2,000 years, <clears throat> believers have relied on Christ's resurrection as the bedrock of Christian faith. But what if the Vatican had been blackmailed into suppressing a first century manuscript revealing the resurrection to be a myth? And that long hidden document suddenly reappears. Michael Dominic, a young Jesuit priest, ex um, expert in the study of ancient writings, is assigned to the Vatican as, a, as an archivist of in the church's legendary secret archives. Hannah Sinclair, a reporter for a Paris newspaper whose privileged family owned a prominent Swiss bank, in chasing a story about Jewish gold stolen by the NAZIS, during World War II, millions of dollars in bouillon that ended up in the vaults of the Vatican Bank. When Dominic discovers a long-hidden papyrus written by Mary Magdalene, one that threatens the very foundations of Christianity, he and Hannah, aided by a trio of brave Swiss guards, try to prevent sinister forces from obtaining the manuscript. Among them, the feared... Uh, uh, Ustasha underground fascist movement, Interpol, 
the shadowy figures at the highest levels of the Vatican itself. Dun, dun, dun. So we know this is a fictional book, kind of like the Da Vinci Code. Or, but, is, or is it? So can we just pull really quickly on this book? Can we ask, is there a, a still a hidden manuscript under the Vatican that could take down everything as we know it? Written by Magdalene herself. I do have to say, regardless of who I was or wasn't in a past life, I do come from a pretty fierce line of badass women. I think a lot of us pretty do. Pretty badass in this lifetime. I hope so. I cry a lot in this lifetime. You're still badass. I do it with tears. <laughs> I cry at Hallmark commercials. I'm like, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> A real person cries, though. Yeah. I think we all, I mean, I, 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 I want to, I, and I don't want to say that. We're, I think Stephanie is also Merovingian. We're not going to dig too much into Stephanie's past because we think she's still cloaked for a reason. But I think she's also Merovingian. I think a lot of us are in the 144,000. I don't go in, you know, you know the weird part about my family history. I'm not going to say anything because... But we'll get into that one day because yeah, I I haven't given I haven't been given the, the green light yet to get into that. Um, oh yeah, okay. Sometimes I just love cards, <laughs> like a giddy old little Christmas, like Christmas night morning. You know, just waking up and the look under the tree and you get what you want. <laughs> this is kind of like that. <laughs> okay. So, yes, there's something to do with the power of the lineage. That's the lineage, power of the lineage. Ace of Wands, the strength card. It's going to offer a new beginning for righteousness. Well, well it's, it's taking down the concept of what we would consider the whole Lucifer. Jesus. Yeah, Luciferian. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. But God had a plan. It had to be hidden this whole time. And it, patience and perseverance on the on the side of light. So and also this emperor could be I feel like it's not only Mag Magdalene stuff. I think it's Yashua stuff. It's it's, I, it's the whole shebang. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the womb. We know that the womb is the holy chalice. It's the holy grail. Is the woman's womb, and it's not. It's it's also Magdalene means um, womb, and that's it's a portal, right? The woman's body is a portal, um, and and what was in that portal? What came into that por portal to create a bloodline? Yashua. So it's both of them. It's both of be them. Like Jack Rabbits. We know from the cards. <laughs> they really I don't know how that. I got that in the cards, but that's what came to me. I'm like, Stephanie, you are one. Well, I mean, the Magdalene manuscript goes into it. Magdalene, she talks about their sex life in the Magdalene. <laughs> she does. She does. She about it. I almost had to put the, the, the book down for a little bit because I was like, I haven't read the whole thing yet. I only got through like that, that, that raunchy part and i was like well then you ain't gonna read this in the bible maybe in song of songs you might read a little bit of that type of thing but oh oh i think the christians will have a heart attack when they find this one out oh they were freaky they got a little freaky do a little dance you know it's so it's Make a little good that i'm multiple generations separated <laughs> from them because if these were my parents i would be like <laughs> i think we have such perverse view though on any kind of intimacy in this I know, world but though seriously think about your parents doing that it's like Hah. no thank you no thank you a stork brought me i was brought by a stork we're just gonna keep it that way <laughs> <laughs> um no but like i think i could laugh about it because knowing i'm a descendant of them it's so many generations removed that it's not you know even though maggie is one of my guides maggie doesn't talk to me about sex though i'm sure she would if i asked her but i've never asked her. 
<laughs> I don't want to ask her about, about that. Don't want to. So Stephanie, is there any questions you want to ask before we wrap up this episode? I know we're going on quite a little long episode. We always go long episodes though. Let's just ask generally speaking, what does Yashua's lineage have to do with Merovingians? All right. Because I think we should maybe deep dive later on about that line too and see where it all connects. Yeah. Well, it connects with them coming together. But I'm curious on what side of that family. Well, we know that Isis incarnated into Mother Mary. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's almost like two very powerful bloodlines coming together. Absolutely. Okay. So let's ask generally speaking, and then I'm good with questions after this, unless this deep dive, well, then we can save it for another show. If we have to yeah, and I, want, I want other people. I want our, our subscribers, our friends watching. I hate calling them. I hate calling people watching my subscribers. I, that's just such a, my friends, our friends watching right now. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I, I want your interaction. Like, now that I'm opening comments back up, I want you to interact. Like, what, what are your opinions? Did you catch something in this that something I missed and you want? Should we do a part two? If so, I want you guys to ask your questions in the comment section. And so in part regarding the Priory of Scion, regarding the Magdalene bloodline, all this kind of stuff. Um, not questions for like a free for all for Stephanie, but just like regarding the subject. So we can do a part two on this actual subject. Ask your questions in the comment section below. And unless you want to know if you're one of the 144,000 too, if you're a cousin of ours, um, ask that and Stephanie can ask, you know, so there's lots of us. This isn't, I'm using, I'm using myself as an example. Um, but there's a bunch of us. There's a bunch of us. It's a whole family. Of, it's a family reunion. <laughs> We are family. My brothers and my sisters. <laughs> like, literally, this is the most fucked up family reunion I've ever been to in my life. But nonetheless, here we are. All I know is if I, if I, if I sucked at that dance, I apologize. <laughs> okay, we're white. It's fine. No. <laughs> you, you've seen my hair. I do have a little bit of African <laughs> Too. Listen, my hair is thin as all fuck. Oh, it is. Uh, this, 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 this is strange. This is. See it? It's 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 kinky. <laughs> That's what they call the kinky here. <laughs> Not kinky as in frisky kinky, but <laughs> mine's just thick and white. I just got a. I got just white straight up white people thick hair. That's just awesome. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you guys a funny story. So I had to go to a Hindu wedding once in India. And if you've been to they're like three days long, like Hindu weddings. And I had to have my, so in India, if you wear your hair down as a woman, you're considered crazy. So you always have to have your hair up. So I went to a local. I go there then because I hate wearing my hair down. Oh, I, yeah. You're considered the crazy person. So um, I went to a local salon to get my hair pulled up in a pretty way for the uh, ceremony. And I was the only white woman in there and they were doing, and then the woman doing my hair, this is adorable. She called all of her friends to come to the salon so they could see a white person's hair. It was the first time she'd ever done a white person's hair. You broke her, what, her blonde hair cherry. I mean, she was like, and she did a really good job, but there's not much difference between Indian hair and white people hair. I mean, I have thick hair too. It's not that different, but she, and she was so proud of herself when she finished doing my hair. She took all these pictures and her friends came by and it was a grand old affair over my hair. <laughs> oh my gosh. I felt like she would have taken one look at my head of hair and said, Oh honey, you got bald spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, Indians are very, very upfront about that kind of stuff. They'll tell you, like, that's why I said that, because I know they're upfront. I used to work with Indian doctors. I mean, Sharat will tell you, like, if you're in the yoga shala and you've gained a little weight, Sharat would go, oh, belly coming. <laughs> you look at me and go, oh, belly got to go. <laughs> oh, my, I think I've told this story my before with my friend. I'll tell it again. So my friend who's from um, Asia, she's from Asia she had gained some weight she got married and she kind of like slacked a little bit between seasons at at the shala that's what happens 
She gave the phone number to get married and who? Yep. Yep. And so she was registering um, and she's Asian as well. So she's kind of from the same cultural background. And she was telling when she was registering, she was telling Sharat that she didn't want to do let second. Let second is no joke. Let second is like intense. She's like, listen, I just want to do primary series, let primary this year. I, I just, he's like, you know, Sharat, I, I gained some weight. I don't really feel comfortable doing let second. He was like, oh no, I see you've gained weight. And she looked at him and she goes, and you as well. <laughs> Like may the force be with you and you as well. Oh, you can wear this all. So, and of course, as a Westerner, I would never say that. I would never be like, and you as belly coming. Like I would never say that. I've heard uh, Sarah Swati, Sharat's mother. I've heard women say that Sharat's mother, when she would help in the shala adjusting, she would tell girls all the time that they have um good birthing hips. Oh boy. Good birthing hips. Good birthing hips. Of course, a, a Western woman does not want to hear that. <laughs> you want to be told. <laughs> like, when, whenever, like, I get told a lot in India that I look too skinny. And I'm like, thank you so much. You know? <laughs> 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 thank you. <laughs> so, um, that's like, that's like, the, that's like the, the Southerners telling a heavier person, oh, you look healthy, except the opposite. You look healthy. Come here, buddy. Come here, Robbie. He's not very happy. All right. So I forgot, what was the last question we were going to ask? So we're looking into Yasuo's lineage yes. with the Merovingians. So yeah, they, by the way, they are also trying to manipulate that too. That's, that's, that's a yes. Um, there's manipulation there as well. Um, <clears throat> it is, so the connection is yes, with the conjunction of Maggie and Yashua, the light and the soul, the twin flame soul. But well, again, it's, also why it's been hidden. Yep. And buried pretty much. So that's also why they don't want twin flames. They want twin flames not together too, because we create. Well, in addition life. also too, it's, um, why do you think they took the name ISIS and made literally a terrorist organization out of it? Yep. Yep. 100%. Are the 144,000, we know they're also the twin flames too. So it's recreating. I actually don't believe that every single one of them has a twin flame now. You don't? So, nope. maybe half of them? Sorry, guys. Maybe. My, my dog is cleaning his wiener. Can you hear that? No. Can't okay. hear it. He just loves me. I know. He always does that when I'm on with females now. He starts cleaning his willy. Well, Robbie knows me in person, so. <laughs> and his butthole. Now he's going for his butthole, so. Should we tell him about That's a shitty, shitty situation? <laughs> What's it? My, our, my friend, our friend Cindy posted... When you poop in October, it's a it's a spooky dookie. <laughs> that was cute. What, am I asking another question? Yeah. Are we uh, should we tell should we tell the audience what what Robbie did a few days ago? Oh my god, that's hysterical! My dog ate my tarot cards, my favorite ones. I have multiple, but my gilded. And so yesterday, he pooped out tarot cards. I could. I asked I, her what was what was the message from spirit? Was it a shitty from- message? Was it? Was it a shitty message from spirit? You know, I couldn't see everything. I know which cards got eaten though. And it, um, yeah, he pooped them out. Was it the moon card? It was like hidden, four hidden secrets. <laughs> One of them was the four of pentacles holding on and releasing. <laughs> I think he was releasing more than holding on. Well, I put so I put the him. We were on the phone that so Stephanie, I've been on the phone. I put, left my cards on, put him a land salt on them just to kind of cleanse. And I think the salt attracted him. The next morning I got up and all of a sudden I was in here making the bed. He was out front and it got real quiet. It's like a little kid when it gets real quiet, you know, something's happening. I went out there and I was like, Robbie, no, like my tarot cards are just, I had to have a, a, a memorial service, a burial for the rest of the Gilded Tarot. I've got new ones coming. <laughs> I'm so, like, well, maybe there was something attached to those cards that you should not be even going near. So he was just he's getting rid of them for you. Oh, Robbie's not Robbie, buddy. Are you my protector? Are you my protector? I Listen, I have not 
he's been getting into tissue again. I caught him at one o'clock in the morning. He comes and eats a bunch of tissue. I catch him every morning. I have not been able to have a trash can in the bathroom since I've had for six years now because dogs just get into that stuff and women, you know, need a trash can in the bathroom. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you know, so anyway, yeah, I'm talking about you. I love you. I do love you so much. I love you. He's a good dog. He's a, he's a great dog. He's a funny dog. He's a silly dog. My dog, our dogs are so alike. Yep. So alike. I'm going to throw Ravi in the med bed so he can grow his balls back. And I'm going to throw mine in the med bed so she can grow her uterus back. And then they can have, we have grand Ravi and Abby puppies. Dogs. Grand dogs. We should have like a little wedding ceremony for them. You know, like it's an arranged marriage. <laughs> Listen, Ravi is the only thing he's ever humped is Todd. For dominance. I'll never forget. So here's the question. Are we going to have a Hindi wedding for them? Oh, those go on three days. <laughs> and, and the Hindu weddings, the, the male, the groom is like the superstar, not the bride. Yeah. And they dance in front of the groom as he comes in. They do a little Bollywood dancing. Yeah. Listen, my friend Nina Gupta, I went to her nephew's wedding. Mina Gupta, if you're watching this, girl can dance. I did not know she could dance like that. I was watching her. I was like, damn, girl, you can dance. And listen, they don't drink. So they're able to party for like three days straight with no, oh, no, Robbie. Sorry. Hold on one second. No, 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 buddy. <laughs> well, he got into tissue. He's been getting into my makeup, too. So he just loves me. Um, so anyway, but they don't drink and they party for days. Like us white people, we can party hard, but we party hard on alcohol. <laughs> I can party without alcohol. I've done it. I like my beer. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, The thing is, the thing is you got to be fun enough to get yourself to that point without the alcohol. Oh, I listen, I, I can, get, I can get drunk on life. <laughs> Sounds like, okay. You sound like I can a get air commercial right now. <laughs> I can get drunk on life. life. All you got to do is have a lot of laughter. You got to have somebody funny in the group. Normally, that's usually me. <laughs> Although, if we're both together, it's the both of us. <laughs> One feeds off of the other. <laughs> yep. This is why we embarrass Tyler, her son. He's always mortified. Oh, yeah. Although, I think I think he thinks I'm his cool aunt, though. I do think he thinks yeah, I'm he his does. cool aunt. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He's Constantly, like, so, mom, when is she coming back? I'm, when is she coming back? I promise him. I think the whole family is like, so when is Bryce coming back? Because she's fun. <laughs> I'm going to take him go karting. Like, we're going to go go karting. Tyler, I know you don't watch my channel because, you know, you're too cool. But um, I promise you, I'm going to take you go karting. He thinks we're too hoo-boo jubi. Hoo jubish. But meanwhile, he's kind of watching. Mm -hmm. I keep I keep telling him if he learns how to read the tarot cards, he's gonna get all the girls. One day, maybe. One day. Anyway, all right, guys. Well, we'll we'll cap it at that for today. I want to hear from you. What do you give me your theories on this? Do you have questions? Maybe we can we can do a part two and dig deeper into this priory of Scion and the inverted Merovingian line versus the real one. Yeah. Does Zion have anything to do with Zion? I think so. It's the same thing. Z and S kind of get interchanged. Now I feel like I got to go back and watch Lord of the Rings because then you have Zoran or Sauron. Is it maybe called Sauron? Be, maybe maybe we, that could be a part two. Are they telling us the truth in all these? Uh, Do all the elementals exist in Lord of the Rings? And supposedly a Christian created it. No, he's a Freemason. No. Just like Narnia. Yeah. Yeah. That's an even bigger one. Language, the wardrobe. Like, that's a huge. Christians love that one. I'm like, don't know if that's actually what you think it is. But anyway. All right, guys. We'll let you go. It's been a long episode. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, Holy crap. I know. You got, do you have readings today or no? No. So you're doing your course tonight is your like second week of your course. And you're going to be putting up information soon about a new course. 
I'm going to be putting up my information soon for the yoga course with Emmy. Um, we'll keep you guys posted on that. So just an FYI to people going to do another beginner's course for the cards. I have a couple more spots left for a beginner's pendulum. I will be doing a more advanced pendulum class. I'm gearing toward doing mostly classes going forward for the most part, but I still have to think about it. Not that I'm ever not going to ever do private readings again it has nothing to do with that. I just honestly, truly need to, yeah, from that for now. And that's not by my, that was by higher guidance, if you get my gist. So, yeah, just a temporary break from reading personally. So just doing the courses. So, but we'll let you know once she is opening it back up to doing private readings. But I think you guys understand um, all human beings need a time to relax and recalibrate. And, and I have a bad habit of doing too much at once. And then I exhaust myself. And that's yeah. what keeps happening to me. So I need to learn the hard way. I think a lot of people do that. And I think this is a good lesson for everyone. So, all right, guys, leave us your questions down below and we'll be doing a part two soon. I know you guys have been asked about part two of Salem and I want to do that too with you, Stephanie, as well, because I think we want to get into- And we also two. need to do our, pri our our personal reading one from when you were here. Yes. From our yes. live show. We have all that listed down, guys. As you know, it's been crazy because the Priory of Scion is literally after me right now. So, <laughs> as I laugh about it. So, it's been a little crazy. Shit's been happening, but we are going to get to all these topics and do that for you. We love you guys so much. I, you guys mean the world to me. You guys that are, who are here, I know you mean the world to Stephanie as well. We consider you our friends. We're all a community. We're all doing this together. Like this is all together. We're going to take down these assholes together and we're going to help create a great new ascended world. So whatever that looks like. So anyway, guys. Um, moral of the story, everything's inverted and don't let your dog eat your tarot cards. So... <laughs>